Okay, so those of you who know me know I'm one of the least handy people you'll ever meet in your life. I mean, I can barely change a light bulb. So I'm only finding out about this news now, but apparently there's a lumber shortage. Uh, so it's kind of a weird thing to run out, to be honest. But then again, it's 2020, and we're talking about a year where we ran out of toilet paper. So nothing really surprises me anymore. Uh, now, this got me thinking, though. This shortage of lumber, what does this mean for certain companies, right? Uh, so the first two companies that come to my mind are, of course, Home Depot and Lowe's. So these are the two big giants in the home improvement industry, and this is where you would go to buy lumber if you were building a deck or something like that, right? So uh, for the sake of time though, today I'm only gonna be talking about Lowe's. Uh, but if you guys are interested, I'll make a video about Home Depot as well. So if you guys are interested, make sure you leave it down in the comments and let me know. And uh, if enough people ask for it, I'll make a video on Home Depot as well. But uh, today I'm only gonna be talking about Lowe's. So without further ado, Let's jump in! So I'm not too caught up on the home improvement industry and lumber prices in general, but I've talked to a few friends and family that are into this kind of stuff, right? Like building stuff or fixing stuff up around the house. And they've all told me that the prices of lumber has skyrocketed. So uh, they've gone to the store and they can't find sometimes like two by fours or plywood. And even if they find things like that, the prices have uh, just increased dramatically. Uh, so according to the reports, this shortage is caused by stay at home orders, giving people more time uh, and people working from home so they decide to take on projects like building decks and whatnot. I actually have some first-hand experience witnessing this uh, because a couple weeks ago I went to grab a coffee with my dad at McDonald's and my dad was in the market for a lawnmower so we decided to pop by the Home Depot that was right beside uh, the McDonald's. So uh, we drive into the parking lot and it's absolutely packed guys like you have no idea. Now of course this it might actually look a little bit worse than it actually is just because uh, they're limiting the amount of people that are inside the store just because of social distancing reasons and everyone's six feet apart so the lineup looks a lot longer than it probably actually is but still like we have people like wrapping all over the place around the store just the line is just it looks like an anaconda right it's so long and then also the parking lot is just absolutely murked so uh, I didn't want to wait in line for like an hour just to get in the store. So uh, me and my dad were like, yeah, we're gonna come back a different day because there's no way we can't even find parking. So yeah, the sales at Home Depot must be going through the roof. And I can tell you that Lowe's is pretty much the same thing, right? So Lowe's, Home Depot, and there's other like home improvement stores, all the home improvement stores, things like Home Hardware, which is this like chain here in Canada of home improvement stores. Uh, yeah, all their sales are probably through the roof right now. But the reason why I wanted to talk about Lowe's in particular today is because of Lowe's dividend aristocrat status. So you remember that video I made about the five best ETFs for beginners? Well, in that video, I talked about a dividend aristocrat ETFs, which will only hold stocks and companies that have paid out dividends consistently or grown their dividends consistently uh, for the past 25 years or more. And actually Lowe's is the biggest holding in the ProShares dividend aristocrat ETF, which I talked about in that video, ticker symbol NOBL, and it comes in at just under 2% of the entire portfolio. Also, according to Seeking Alpha, Lowe's has grown their dividends continuously for a whopping 56 years straight. And of course, with the recent boost because of the Roni situation, you can bet that this dividend is not going away anytime soon. Uh, in fact, I think it's literally one of the safest dividends on Wall Street, to be honest. I really don't see them cutting their dividend anytime soon. They definitely don't want to cut their dividend and lose their dividend aristocrat status, right? Especially not when their sales are just absolutely through the roof. So uh, I think that the dividend is extremely safe. Now you guys know I don't like buying stocks at all time highs, but I gotta say, this one's actually kind of tempting. So the reason why I say that is because I think in the short term, lumber prices are gonna keep on going up. And this is because I think a lot of people are still working from home until the end of the year at least. And we're entering into the height of summer here in North America, which means that uh, these home improvement projects are only gonna increase. And don't forget, it's not just lumber. I know lumber is a big part of it, but a lot of home improvement projects don't use lumber, right? So say if you're just like, I don't know, uh, updating your lights or you're painting a wall or something like that. Uh, you don't need lumber for those and Lowe's sells all of it, right? So Lowe's sells everything to do with home improvement. So it's not just lumber. And in the short term, I can see Lowe's sales increasing dramatically. Uh, and also they're able to sustain that increase because uh, once again, if people, if you start building a project and let's say you start building a deck, 
then you're not gonna like leave the deck halfway done and just walk away, right? So if you start building it, you're gonna have to finish, which means that you're gonna have to continuously buy more material. And also, if you're building a deck, I assume that you're gonna need some like tools and nails and whatnot, right? So it's not just lumber. Uh, so you're gonna need like accessories to go along with your purchases of lumber. Now expectations are high for this upcoming quarter and Lowe's is scheduled to release their earnings on August 19th. But looking at this chart, Lowe's has a history of beating the estimates. And I think given the stories I've read online and just looking at stores that are around me, I wouldn't be surprised if they actually smash expectations, which could send the stock skyrocketing. Valuation wise, we can see that Lowe's trades at a slightly lower valuation than Home Depot, with Lowe's forward PE coming in at around 20 and a PS ratio coming in at around 1.5, uh, versus Home Depot, which has a forward PE of 23 and a PS ratio of 2.5. And this valuation is actually not as high as I expected, given the fact that the stock is literally at all time highs. And looking at their balance sheet, it does look like they have a lot of cash in comparison to their current debt. Uh, so liquidity shouldn't be a problem for them anytime soon. And also we're talking about a company that brings in $1.3 billion of net income on their last reported quarter in the middle of a pandemic. So all in all, I'm pretty bullish on Lowe's and I think that once the next earnings report comes out, they may see some new all time highs. Uh, now, of course I could be wrong and I'm not a financial advisor, so none of this is financial advice. Uh, please do your own research before deciding on whether or not to buy and sell a stock. We'll have to wait and see, but I have a really good feeling about Lowe's and uh, I might pick up some shares soon. I don't know, I'll see. So I'll leave the video here. Be sure to hit the like button if you enjoy the video and consider subscribing if you like the series. Be sure to follow me on Twitter and Instagram. I'll leave the links down below in the description as always. And with that being said, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.